welcome to the channel guys today we are going to see how to control the n20 encoder motor with the sp32 as we can see below so we are going to require the following components to perform the task first one sp32 second one n20 encoder motor here we are using a 6 volt variant and the third one was l 9 s motor driver shield and the fourth components are two jumper cables along with those components i am also going to use uh, mobile power brick okay it was a 5 volts 2 amp in order to power the n20 motor with the help of motor driver so uh, you can see it was a usb cable i cut it one end and i add jumper cables to it so the white represents the 5 voltage and the black represents the ground it provides a 5 voltage output now take a good look at the components the first one was the sp32 is a 3.3 voltage microcontroller and its gpio pins are 3.3 voltage and are not 5 volt tolerant okay you have to keep this in mind so guys the second component of this list was an n20 and quarter motor the motor here was a 6 volt variant okay since the board of the n20 motor can be powered with 3.3 or 5 voltage i can directly connect the vcc and the ground pin of the n20 and quarter motor with the esp32s 3.3 voltage and ground pins and i can directly connect the c1 and c2 pins which are encoder pins of n20 encoder motor to the esp32 directly I can connect the M1 and M2 pins of this N20 encoder motor to the motor driver shield. So the motor power requirements can be met from the motor driver shield where the motor driver shield itself will get power from the external power supply. So the third component was LN110S motor driver shield and we can control the motor driver shield with 3.3R 5 voltage microcontrollers. So in this case I am going to control this motor driver with ESP32 without any usage of logical level converters so now let's get started with connecting these components together connect the n20 motor to the connector that was provided with it okay okay now Connect the 3.3 voltage and the ground of the ESP32 with the encoders, ground and VCC pin. I am connecting the brown wire to the 3.3 voltage and black to ground. So you can see. I am connecting these things so the ground wire of the encoder will be represented by blue and the VCC will be represented by black so you can see to black I am going to connect brown So it was from like this. So brown was connected to black, which stands for VCC, and um, black color of black color jumper wire was connected to the blue. It was pretty much like this. Now I'm going to connect the GPIO pins D19 and D21 to the IA1 and IB1 pins of the LN110 motor driver.
Since we connected the IA1 and IB1 pins of the LN1100 S motor driver to the ESP32, I am going to connect the 0B1 and 0A1 pins of the LN1100 with the M1 and M2 pins of the N20 encoder motor. Okay, so I am going to connect these pins to the N20 motor. With that, the N20 motor wires are completely connected to the ESP32 and ln one gds module. Now, I am going to connect the external power supply to the VCC and ground of the ln one gds motor driver. So, as I mentioned earlier, the white represents plus and the black represents negative and the output will be 5 volts 2 amps. It will be connected to the L9L1GDS motor driver, VCC and ground. Okay. So we are done with the connections right now. Before providing power supply to the circuit, you have to double check the connections otherwise you are going to burn the components. When you did proper connections, you can see a red LED on an LN W1GS motor driver shield when it was connected to the external power supply through power brake and you can see a green LED on N20 motor when it was connected properly to the ESP32. After setting up the connections, now it's time for coding. So guys, open up your PC and go for Arduino. Now, I already have a code with myself. So this is the code to control the N20 encoder motor with the ESP32. Okay. Now you have to compile it. After done with compilation, you have to check in tools. You should select ESP32 dev module. And you also check the proper COM port. In my cases, both are already set. So guys. When you are uploading the code into ESP32, you have to long press on the boot button of the ESP32 and you should release the boot button only when the upload was done. Now I am uploading the code. As you can see, it was uploaded. Now press the EN button on the ESP32 so that uh, you can see that ESP32 was controlling the N20 motor. As you can see guys, this is how we can control the N20 encoder motor with the ESP32. And thank you for watching the video. Have a nice day. Take care.